using graphics effectively. This is podcast number 96. It's at the basic level and requires no knowledge of Accordance Bible software or Hebrew or Greek. Good graphics help bridge the distance to ancient texts, increasing knowledge and understanding. However, too many of us who study the Bible underestimate the value of good graphics. After all, we're people of the text, readers. We can usually visualize things in our heads. I think we need to remember that many of those we seek to teach need those graphics. They may not be readers. Some people require visual information in order to understand a passage. And that's particularly true of today's television generation, which has now been nearly replaced by today's YouTube generation. The same people who go to sleep during long discussions of Greek and Hebrew may perk up and take notice when they see a good illustration. Where do I find good illustrations for teaching the Bible? And once I do, how do I know if it's legal to use them? It used to be hard to find good illustrations for biblical studies. Now, happily, that was yesterday. The internet offers many possibilities. However, I find sorting through all the junk there just frustrating. Besides, when I do find a good image, I always wonder who holds the copyright. Can I use it legally? When, where, and in what format? After all, if I'm going to teach the Bible, I want to make sure that I'm doing so ethically. That's why I'm pleased that Accordance offers such a nice array of graphics resources. They're all there in the online store under Graphics Resources. From them, we can choose whichever ones best fit our needs. The store divides them into three groups. Right here at the top are the interactive graphics, Accordance's Bible Atlas, and its timeline. These are both included in the graphics collection, which also includes the photo guide, and it's at a nice discount. The second group contains our various photo collections, like the photo guide and the photo museum. Currently, there are eight different photo collections, plus all the images of the various Greek and Hebrew manuscripts. Last but not least, there are the image-rich modules, texts that have a large number of quality illustrations, diagrams, charts, and photos. All of our Bible atlases fall into this category. The Holman Book of Biblical Charts, Maps, and Reconstructions is an excellent example of this category, as are Zondervan's various illustrated resources. Users often ask us if there are any copyright restrictions for the graphics found in Accordance modules. Here's a summary of our policy. First, any resource can be used in presentations. And secondly, any resource can be printed for a small group. However, we ask that you request permission to publish openly, whether that's digitally, including the internet, or in print. Now, that doesn't apply to the Accordance Atlas and the timeline. Those images never require our permission. However, we always appreciate acknowledgement. A tag like, from Accordance Bible Software, not only lets people know that you're using a trustworthy source, but lets them know where they can purchase similar quality resources for themselves. There are a number of different kinds of information that are best communicated using graphics. They include the geographical setting using an atlas here, or the chronological setting, using a timeline. The ecological setting, which would include photos of flora, fauna, or climate, as well as man-made artifacts, whether they're buildings, weapons, tools, pottery, those kinds of things. Both of these are well illustrated with photos or illustrations. Also ask if there are parts of the passage that might be made clearer through the use of a chart or a diagram. This covers a wide range of possibilities. It might include a syntax tree, a sentence diagram of a complicated passage, or even a diagram of a process, like pressing grapes into wine. These are the kinds of things that will help our audience understand those passages. I often use a highlighter to mark possibilities as I move through a passage. Then I can look for all the graphics at once. So, let's look for possibilities in this familiar passage about David and Goliath. Now, as you can see, I'm running Accordance for Windows under Parallels on my Mac. I'm going to try to use the Windows platform more often in these podcasts by way of welcoming our Windows users to the Accordance program. So as I go through here, I think Philistines might be a good place to look for some images. I'll click on the highlighter here and use a gold highlight. Oh, it tells me that I have to actually select the word, so I'll do so. I'll click highlighting, I'll use that gold. Now from there on out, 
all I'm going to do is to use Control 8, that's Command 8 for Mac users, and go through and mark the rest of these possibilities. There's Soko and uh, the Valley of Ela. That ought to be a great geographical location to locate. I also notice here that we've got this champion named Goliath, who has this really, really unusual height. I'm going to go ahead and mark that. Maybe I can get a graphic on that. All right. We'll go ahead and click down a couple of verses, and let's mark some of this armor. He has a coat of mail. Control-8. I see a bronze helmet on his head. Control-8. Weight of the coat is 5,000 shekels of bronze. There's a lot of good detail on here. Bronze armor on his legs. There we go, a javelin of bronze. Control-8. And uh, we also have got this spear that's like a weaver's beam. And you can see what I'm doing. Now, it doesn't particularly matter what colors we use, because once I'm done, I'm just going to go up here and clear all these highlights anyhow. This is merely a tool for me to use in order to identify all the graphics possibilities. Well, let's go find them. First, let's amplify Goliath to the timeline to get a chronological context for this story. We'll tweak the appearance a bit so we can see that the event occurred in the early Iron Age in Palestine. That's something that may explain why the Philistines had to use bronze to outfit such a large man. Perhaps there just wasn't enough iron available. Next, let's select Soko and look it up on the atlas. You'll notice I used the contextual menu for both of these searches. Control click on a Mac and right click on a PC. Again, we'll set the magnification and center it so people can see this impressive valley. Now we use the Mac command key to move the atlas around. That's the PC control key. And remember that the magnify zone button is on the other side on a PC. Okay, now we're ready to search for other kinds of graphics. My favorite method, and the one I'm going to recommend, is to use Accordance's Search All. Just be sure to set the range to Graphic Tools. That's a predetermined category, like all the rest of these bracketed ones here. It contains all the tools you own that have extensive graphics. Search All looks for the keyword, in this case Goliath, in the caption field. Now, we're also going to search for other keywords, like armor, helmet, sling stones, and the other ones that we marked in the passage in step one. Now, from here on out, the process is rather simple. Search All lists all of the hits. We scroll through them until we find something suitable. And if there are a lot of hits in a single source, I recommend opening that source by double-clicking on it so we can use the up and down mark buttons to navigate through the hits more quickly. Click on any picture to open it in its own picture window. Then, if we decide we want to keep it, click on this arrow here. That will open the picture in its own tab and save it, and then we go back to search all. Now, while I enjoy this process of finding good graphics, I'm betting it's going to get rather tedious for those of you just watching this podcast. I think we've already shown enough of my workflow to give you an idea of the process. Now, let's take a look at the presentation options. The two big presentation choices are Accordance to Slideshow Mode or a dedicated slide presentation program like Apple's Keynote or Microsoft's PowerPoint. The Accordance Slideshow is easier to set up and provides a live text, but the two dedicated presentation programs offer far more sophisticated layout options. Let's look at an example of both. The first step in composing an accordion slideshow is to reduce everything in the workspace to a single zone. That means transforming all these pictures into an individual tab within that zone. The process is simple. We just click in the title bar and then drag it to our zone where the other tabs are. Once we've got all the tabs in place, we rearrange them in the order in which we'd like to use them, then tweak each picture as necessary. The result looks something like this. We can then move through our presentation using these navigation arrows or choose the next slide we'd like to see from the drop-down menu. Making a slide presentation with Keynote or PowerPoint requires a bit more work. Use the copy a citation command to copy and paste text as text. which will let us adjust it a bit more once it's in the presentation program. 
Copying a section of a picture or an atlas just means selecting that section, then using the contextual menu to choose Copy Picture. Again, once it's pasted, we can adjust the graphic however we like. Want the whole picture? No problem. Just click on it and again use the contextual menu to copy it. We can even add a nice title in these slides. Now, putting these into a dedicated presentation program means we can use all of its features, the various builds, transitions, titles, arrows, and other graphics, but we won't have Accordance's live text feature. There are also a few of Accordance's resources that don't copy directly. That includes the interlinear view, the syntax trees, and the diagrams. That means that users have to take screenshots of them. Mac users, that's Command Shift 3 or 4, depending upon whether you want the whole screen or just part of it. PC users, that means you'll have to use the Windows Print Screen command, which I assume you're familiar with. Once you have the screenshot, whichever program you're on, just insert it into the slide and adjust it as necessary. One more advantage of a dedicated presentation program is that we can make our own graphics. Sometimes I'll paste and modify Accordance graphics to make my own illustration. This figure from a Mycenaean bowl we saw earlier is a great example. This soldier is outfitted much like Goliath. Bronze helmet, greaves, that's those things around his shins, bronze shield and long spear. Now I'm going to use it to make a chart of the relative sizes of the characters in this story. The Hebrew Bible gives Goliath's height as 9 foot 5 inches. However, the Greek Septuagint describes Goliath as 6 foot 5 inches, which by the way is the same height described in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Either way, David is probably average for biblical times, and that's about 5 foot 2. Here's a picture of him in the same armor. Now, actually, he probably looked a bit more like this picture of a modern shepherd without armor. That's probably closer to David's appearance, without the genes, of course. Here's how he compares with Goliath. Curiously, the Bible describes Saul, who did not respond to Goliath's challenge, as head and shoulders above every man in Israel. That would make him about the same height as the Septuagint's description of Goliath. A real interesting coincidence. Okay, everyone, let's see lots of exciting Bible study and sermon presentations this next week, filled with all kinds of photos, illustrations, and diagrams. Accordance's graphics will add snap to your presentation, keeping the interest of young and old alike. And who knows, someone in your audience may be so appreciative, they'll buy you a new Accordance graphics module, just to keep those pictures coming. This has been Dr. J for Accordance Bible Software. Thank you for watching this episode of Lighting the Lamp. Music